So in particular, I tend to focus on substance and behavioral addictions, on anxiety disorders, and on eating disorders. And all of those are sort of <laughs> related together. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess, you know, probably a lot of listeners would be familiar with, let's say, anorexia or bulimia. What are the most common eating disorders you deal with? And you know, what are some of the difficult aspects of working with people that have them? Great question. So um, anorexia and bulimia are absolutely some of the most common. Some other common ones would be binge eating disorder and ARFID, which stands for avoidant and restrictive food intake disorder. I think that overall, probably the biggest challenge is that most eating disorders tend to be about avoidance. And what that means is someone has either a thought that's distressing or a physical sensation that's distressing, an emotion that's distressing, and eating disorder behaviors allow you to basically not be present with that experience. And so what's challenging about working with them is that you're essentially asking someone to sit with a painful experience. And it's just really, really hard to do that. And typically people have to have really good motivation to be willing to do that. What do you mean you're asking them to sit with their experience? What is it? You mean to talk about it or to consider it or deal with it? Both talking about it, experiencing it within themselves, for example. So let's say that someone has, let's say that someone has bulimia and they have, I don't know, a history of family conflict with one of their parents, let's say, and it's really painful for them for various reasons. And, um, you know, let's say they have a phone conversation with that parent and it doesn't go well and they're experiencing pain. You know, they're feeling maybe anxiety, maybe they're feeling anger, maybe they're feeling guilt or shame, maybe they're feeling sadness. All of those emotions are not just uncomfortable, but can be painful. And for someone who has bulimia, they might be tempted to binge and purge as a way to not have to be as present with those experiences, meaning it doesn't have to be top of mind and it doesn't have to be something that they feel like is overwhelming. It's the eating disorder behavior is in a way a distraction and avoidance behavior that allows them to sort of not be with that emotional experience for a period of time. And so when we're working with people who experience these things, part of the process is noticing when you have an urge to use those behaviors in order to escape some uncomfortable thought, feeling, emotion. And instead of using the behavior, we're asking them, you know, let's try not using the behavior. And maybe instead, can you sit? Can you pay attention to your breath? Can you attend to a different focus object? Or perhaps even can you talk to someone about how you're feeling? Can you journal about how you're feeling and sort of stay present with and be with your emotional experience rather than trying to move away from it?